Tomorrow we're going to be talking about the Phantom Rage metagame predictions and what we can expect. I know this is really backwards. And for this video, we're going to be talking about early results that we saw coming on out of the tournaments. So remember, we are not even zero days into the new format. So that's not even out yet. A few online communities have been doing things. And I want to talk about those results. So show some love. Make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on tomorrow's breakdown on what we can expect more of out of Phantom Rage. Now let's dig on into this bad boy, shall we? Phantom Rage is a little bit more game-changing than I thought. I expected Zodiac. I expected, you know, double A Zeus shenanigans. Uh, Tri Brigade kind of looks like it might not have the impact that a lot of the community initially expected. A lot of the community was very, yeah, Tri Brigade, yeah, Beast Warrior support. But kind of looks like it might have fallen off. Like I said, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. So the first thing we're going to be talking about today is the D Duelist Academy Weekly Tournament was won by Pran Kids. Now, full disclaimer here, I do think that uh, Pran Kids is an incredibly powerful deck. I think that we would be completely ignorant to not acknowledge this deck for what it is, alright? Is it absolutely crazy, bonkers, Dragon Lake Dinosaur insanity? I don't think so. A lot of people I've heard <clears throat> talking about this deck going second, uh, sometimes it sucks, alright? So, the whole plan here is we're going to make Battle and Butler, and we're going to smash through your field while keeping our Butler face up on the field. Isn't it really great that now, with Meow Meow being introduced, your entire deck, its problems were fixed. You now can effectively function on a one card access, and then you get the ability to, oh, double battler, butler your opponent. All right, don't underestimate the power of interruptions. Now, the thing that made this list kind of cool was we have Mystic Mind in here so that we can stall out the opponent. Wow, it's almost like this become a viable strategy. Uh, Mystic Mind is good for the format win video. Uh, it, it's coming at some point, don't worry. All right, I got a list of things I need to film. Uh, we also are maxing out on triple tactics and triple copies of the Forbidden Droplet. Now, I know a lot of people kind of look at Droplet and three ofs and they're like, if there's a massive Dragoon format, that's one of the things I would approach when looking at this and go, well, if there's a lot of Dragoons present in the room, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to aim to counterpick all of these decks. All right, so I'm going to play droplets in the main. I, that, that's how I would see it. Now, triple tactics, I, I've had a little bit of a back and forth with this, um, at least in Invoked um, Dogmatica. I think that the card is, it, it, it's hand trap reliant. We'll go with that. All right. If you're playing in a format where, once again, there's not a lot of hand traps, you kind of lose a lot of that value. Also, if, like, if your opponent's playing negations and things like that, that's where you gain the value. Um, but it depends. We are seeming like we're heading on into a format here where those interruptions are going to gain a little bit more meaningful value in the long run. So I do think that Prank Kids playing all of these cards, while they might seem like they're a brick in Paul Robinson's deck by a few people, I, I do think that it's okay. Now, he's also playing two copies of the Field Spell. I've actually seen this in a couple of builds. Later tonight, we're going to look at some OCG list. Um, that are kind of messing around with some of these concepts. Well, you guys can get the flip side of the equation, and you guys can see, well, hey, so the OCG was doing this. This is how they're adapting it on the TCG side. And I do think that's one thing that's very important for players to understand is when you look at tournament results like this, and then you go one step further and you go back to the OCG side, and you're looking at some of these builds, and you're like, well, this is why they've chosen to play Thunder Dragon Fusion over Invocation. By the way, Thunder Dragon Fusion has some really cool application in this deck. All right, you actually get to make some really cool plays uh, with it by being able to banish from the graveyard to capitalize. I don't think a lot of people kind of caught that. There's a reason why we play Thunder Dragon Fusion. It gives you that extra layer of, oh, I can do that. So. Little fun things that you can do in Prank Kids for 500. Outside of that, so rotation was kind of cool. Myst Mystic Mine plus, you know, 
Field spell? I, I mean, it's good. I also saw a list that was playing Yield Chaos, uh, the, the Black Luster Field spell the other day um, with um, set rotation. I was like, we've really come full circle at this point. So this Brain Kids list, outside of that, everything looks very standard. It's definitely got the adjustments to want to go second between all the talents, the droplets, the ash blossoms, the mystic minds, the talents, the imperms, the ashes. It doesn't surprise me that this is really the powerhouse that we're seeing. So I do think that, that is very interesting. So is there a wrong way to build prank kids? Yes, by playing one of each. Outside of that, you do get some sort of diversity. Now, Next list we're going to talk about here is Logan Oswald's Dead Escape list. This was from Grim YGO. He won first place at his tournament. Now, the big thing I want to say here, uh, Lund was telling me that um, Logan was talking to him about this deck beforehand, and I will have Lund's deck profile on the channel at some point for you guys, for you avid Dead Escape players out there that are, you know, hounding me for this. I will eventually sit down with Lund and I will cover that, so be patient, all right? So the first thing I want to say here, Datascape is very budget. I've said that like 85 times over. Uh, the bad news is uh, you're a true king of all calamities turbo deck, all right? And I think a lot of players kind of come to that realization that if true king of all calamities goes on a future ban list, well, that sucks. Um, that's Datascape gone, but, but, that doesn't mean that we can't take advantage of what we have in front of us now. So the big thing with this deck is we are maxing out on evenly matched in this on a 41 card variant. Um, one thing I do like about that is we do get more board wipe capabilities of going second, forcing these negates, uh, and then we can reestablish a true king of all calamities to jam our opponent out of the game. Seems riveting, right? Um, it's kind of what we have to do. Uh, maxing out on all of the ratios is fine because we're missing the other level 6 um, yellow one. And like I said later on, or actually, I think we've already gone through the Sky Striker list from the other day. So people got the chance to take advantage and see this. Um, a lot of people are like, why, why, where's the Itelli? Itelli is a good card in the deck. Uh, a lot of the earlier builds I saw did not opt to play Itelli. And it's, sometimes you just don't need it. I'm not saying that it's not a good card because that'd be lying to you, but it is an extremely good card um, for what you combo off. Outside of that, Triple Desires, uh, there's an interaction where you can put back cards via one of the effects off of the Desires, uh, which is actually really cute uh, because it says cards in its text. It's really weird, but for those of you that have played the deck, you'll understand that. So. The entire purpose of this deck, like I said, it's tricking of all calamities turbo. There, there's no other like sugar coating icing on the cake. All right, you make board, you go he 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 tricking of all calamities. Yay! Outside of that, very 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 standard list. I think that's kind of the cool thing when I look at Datascape as a whole. Every list looks the same, minus like tech choices. Like this one's opting to play upstart versus other things which isn't horrible. I do like the logic of Upstart with Desires. Uh, even though it's a 41 card deck, uh, the Upstart does take the place of one other resource that you could potentially burn off of the Desires. I don't think a lot of people have realized that, but that works that way. So, every Datascape list looks essentially the same. So if you're looking to net deck one of these and try it out, your deck is very tight, and I think that's probably the cool thing. You, you can't really, unless you're trying to like play too lao lao and like too nyang nyang, um, and you're just being like, well, this is the way you play the deck, then that's the only real point that I think you can really mess up the deck building. It's, it's pretty helmet proof outside of that. So these are the two earliest things that caught my attention. Of course, you got Infernoble Knights, you got the Dinosaurs, out here messing around with things and seeing how I mean praying kids and La La and friends virtual world protectors I mean it was very clear that these are going to be the two best decks out there I'm waiting to see how Zodiac will adapt here um, if not I do think it will be a very strong tier 2 deck at the very least 
if we don't see a lot of crazy results. And as I said, these are just the first things caught in my head. There might have been other tournaments and other results out there, but I will eventually, when I see that information, I'll cover it. So guys, what do you think? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Shout out to Lundrighty, as always, for helping me give this info. Uh, without him, I'd be a little bit less of a man. I right, guess. Take care. Have a good rest of your day. Make sure you got notifications on for tomorrow, and I'm out, guys. Peace. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end. Without you guys' support, well, I would probably be doing Drupal Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vancall 40 for all of your Cardfight Vanguard content brought to you by Mcall 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcallgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.